Welcome back to Luma for Classic. Now, as you can see, we're in the 1975 XJ6, and actually, I'm on my way to get inspected, and I really hope it's gonna pass. Uh, here in Sweden, like in many other countries, you need to have your cars inspected, uh, even classics. But I think when they're about after 50 years of age, you don't have to anymore. But I still recommend that you do. Because there are a lot of things that you can miss. Even though I've looked over this car, there could still be um, some worn out suspension parts. I'm just not able to check at home with the car in the air. Because they have some special equipment for testing those things. Uh, with a car that's a classic like this one, it's 45 years old, it still needs to get inspected. It needs to be inspected every two years. It was about four years ago that this thing was inspected, and it was two years ago that it was supposed to be inspected, but then it went put off the road because uh, the owner wasn't driving it. And then when it came to my house, it had a blown head gasket. And now I've been, you know, fixing it. So if you're new to the channel and you haven't seen those videos of getting this thing back on the road, I'll put a link to a playlist so you can check out all the videos and everything that's been done to this car. So I've worked on it since about January until now. And today is the, it's the 30th, 30th of April. And it's right before a long weekend, so I really hope it's gonna pass and I can enjoy it a bit over the weekend. Uh, and there's a thing here in Sweden that actually, even if it doesn't completely pass, uh, let's say there's some minor issues with it, you get 30 days to fix it, you can still drive the car. So even if that happens, even if there's some minor problems with the car, some minor things I need to fix and I get 30 days to fix it, I'm gonna call that success, because then I can actually drive it. And that's what I really want. I want this to be a rolling restoration now. I'm gonna continue working on the car while using it, because I think that's the nicest way of getting a car back on the road actually to be able to drive it, not only work on it all the time. Because you get really sick of a car when you just work on it all the time and you never really get to drive it. We're still up here on some small country roads out by my house. But I'm going to turn off the camera in a little bit and then head on the highway. Uh, I'm probably not going to be able to film the inspection. Um, I haven't really called and asked them or anything. I should have done that. But if I can, I'm going to take some pictures at least or maybe film a little bit. Uh, sneakily when the car is up in the air to have a look at it underneath uh, but I don't think I'm gonna ask them uh, if I can film or not don't really want to disturb them in their work and if so I should have planned that ahead of time so also I'm hoping that the you guys can see me pretty well it's a new thing I'm trying out with the camera here uh, you, before when I've had the uh, camera in the car I just had my cell phone and now I've put up uh, my big camera that I use in the workshop on a suction cup on the door. So I'm hoping that's working out pretty well. It's not too shaky. Uh, if it is, I apologize. This is going to be a quick video of this thing getting inspected. So uh, hopefully it's all going to work out fine. But now I'm going to turn off the camera. I'm going to head out on the highway. And then next time you see me, either it'll be at that place or it's when I have the results knowing if it passed or failed. So fingers crossed it's going to pass. So I'm back at home now and unfortunately it's pouring rain outside. I was going to take the camera out and show you guys what the car looks like. Maybe find a nice scenic place on the way home and just talk about the car and stand outside. I had a tripod with me. But it's completely pouring down. It's extremely windy so that's going to have to be another day. I asked the guy when I got there and unfortunately there was no filming, no photography, nothing at all. And also due to Corona, I wasn't even allowed to be in there when he expected. I had to stand to the side, behind the line, and just watch at a distance. The car, it didn't fully pass, but I do have 30 days to fix it. And they're pretty minor things. Uh, so there was no rust, which I knew. There is uh, nothing wrong in the suspension, and so that's great. The test I did of looking over everything and feeling is fine. There was no play in anything. All the wheel bearings are really good. Um, brakes were good, uh, except one thing with the brakes, but we'll get to that. So the first thing on the list is one of the seatbelts in the back. Now, for some reason, it just doesn't want to pull out at all. They worked fine when I got there, and I checked that they buckled and everything. But one of the ones in the back doesn't want to pull out and it's completely stuck in. So I'm going to have to probably take it apart and clean it out. Otherwise, see if I can find a spare one. It's a little difficult. I do have some spares in black, but this thing has a uh, blue seat belts for some reason. They're pretty nice, but um, that one doesn't work. Uh, and then when he did the parking test, he said the parking brake doesn't work at all. The lever just goes up. So I was really shocked. I have a look that... Uh, remember if I showed you guys, there's a cable up there that connects the first part and then there's a second cable that goes back. 
Well, the first cable right there had jumped out of the shoe that holds it. Not really sure why that happened. It's happened once before and I thought that was just because I was messing with the adjustment. But it's jumped out again, so maybe there's something wrong up there. So I'm gonna have a look at that, see if there's a way to secure that cable so it doesn't jump out. So the parking brake wasn't really working. Other than that, I'm pretty happy because I can keep on driving this car. And that's what I'm gonna do right now. Uh, I'm gonna use this thing as much as I can as a daily driver, even though I'm not really going anywhere besides, you know, the grocery store. But still, I'm gonna try and drive this car as much as I can. And now it's on to working on some XJSs on the channel. And you notice I said XJS is because I do have a surprise for you guys. Not only will there be videos on the XJS that you've seen before, there will be a video on a second XJS. A friend of mine brought over his 3.6 manual that needs some work doing to it. Um, well, I'm going to get into more details later, but basically we're going to fit an, a new AC system to it. I'm going to have a uh, just do a service, do coolant hoses, and do some other small things. So there will be some videos coming up on that as well. But I think this is a good way to not really end, but it's the first chapter of getting this car back on the road. Because now it really is back on the road. It is inspected. Uh, I mean, for 30 days, but I'm going to fix those things. It's insured and it's registered and it's all back on the road. It was all done at home in the home garage. So I have saved all the receipts. And if you guys want to, I thought I could go through what's actually cost to get this car back on the road. So leave a comment down below if you want to see a full detailed cost of what it costs to get this car back on the road. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. And until next time, I'm Adam, and this was Living With A Classic. I'll see you soon.